Do you consider yourself a beast? In Conan Exiles PvE. Are you the warrior who wields a two-handed sword and believe you can slice through anything? And nothing is a challenge to you. You are a conqueror. Or so you think you are. Do you want to be the true conqueror that you can be? Do you want to wield the ultimate two-handed weapon that will turn you into that true beast, that dominator, that warrior that you really can be? Or do you want to turn your thralls into the ultimate slaying machine? Well, if you want this bad boy that you can see on my shoulder, Come with me now, and I'll show you where to get it. Here we go. Hello my friends, and welcome back to another exciting video here on Corn and Exiles. We are up here in the frozen north at the moment. If I quickly flick up my map, it takes me forever to get to it, so excuse me, but there we are. We're just up here, we've come up over the bridge of the Betrayer as you can see there, a little bit further up, and we are just below this area here, which is called the Black Keep. The obelisk is just there behind me, where if you're coming up from the highlands or from down south you would run across that bridge there. And just remember right in the very very centre is the coldest point, so if you're coming up here you only want to come up here either with the champion's armour, is a really good endgame armour for its bonuses but also for cold protection or a set of what I'm wearing right now, either the Silent Legion or as I'm wearing the Redeemed Silent Legion and maybe some spiced food but other than that really you should be fine without it or if you're using lower end cold weather gear you could use the Vinea fur set which is I think that's only a medium set but or you could make the Vinea heavy which will give you some cold protection but you'll probably still need to bring either a shield that is a white shield called the Soul Spiel or Soul Spell I think you pronounce it uh, when you have that equipped in your hand that will give you protection against the cold and also, yeah, do bring some spiced food with you because especially when you drink uh, from your water skin when you're up here, you will get cold as you drink, so you'll need the food to warm you up again. But literally, get a, get across that bridge, you'll have those two guys there to deal with. Or if you're coming from another, you've already been here before, you'll know about this obelisk key, you claim that, and then what you want to do is we want to run all the way up here now bear in mind for this video i am cloaked and in god mode so anything around here is not going to attack me so you will have skeletons to deal with if you come up here yourself so what you want to do is make your way up here uh, this guy here will attack the weird thing is if you get your follower to attack him they won't go here and attack him they'll run all the way around there and he'll run out there and they'll attack from that side. The, the mapping seems to be really weird. But yeah, you'll have him to contend with. He'll have his friends to deal with as well when you get up here. And keep going all the way up. He'll have another couple up here, as you can see. But follow it round. This this is great if you've got a thrall or even two thralls with you. They'll just deal with them for you. Another couple here what we want to do is keep running up here oh and while we're making our way in so this is a big two-handed sword there's also a one-handed version which has a slightly different name which you can do great lunge attacks with and swipe attacks and that actually does decent one-handed hits as well but yeah we'll talk about those after so again another couple of skeletons in here as you run in and you make your way down here and into the front door of the Black Keep. Right, well here we are inside the Black Keep. That's the door where we've just come in. Now, I used to get lost like anything in this dungeon. And I'll be honest with you, it is really easy to get lost. But if you refer back to this video at times, hopefully now this is just a quick walkthrough just to give you a quick overview of it. If you guys would like to see a video of me actually running this dungeon with my character without cloak and god mode, with a couple of thralls just to show you how it works, how the fighting goes, let me know in the comments down below. Give this a thumbs up. It shows me that A, you appreciate this video, but you also want to see 
an actual run through of it as well with my latest setup by the way uh, video link for that will be at the end of this video so you check that one out uh, just talking about best armor for thralls it's called my ultimate thrall uh, build uh, it's a war party build but it will actually work with one thrall as well so yeah back to this when you come in here you want to take a left go down this corridor here keep following this all the way around bear in mind there will be things that will attack you but just have a look around while you're running through keep following this here to the right you can see that there's a doorway but it looks like we can't get through so we can't get through there so what you want to do is check all around here a little corridor here follow this uh, these doors do actually open sometimes there is a chest in them uh, there's one, I don't know if it's that door or that door but there will be a skeleton in them so just bear that in mind, it will come out and attack you but you want to go this way keep following it there, you see nothing there again see how easy it is to get confused this is why I'm just doing this just to show you guys sort of how easily you can get lost but if you keep following it around there's not a lot of enemies in here, but there's, a, there's enough to make it challenging, and they do hit a little bit harder. A little bit dark here, as you can see. Uh, so you want to follow these stairs up. Bring a torch with you if it helps. Uh, I do have my gamma increased slightly. Hopefully you guys can see this well enough, but there is a little bit of light in places. But yeah, um, torches don't necessarily make a huge difference. But you'll have two guys here to deal with I think come down here follow us around oh no you're okay come around through here now you can go down there and there are things to loot but you want to keep going straight where you come from you come into here there will be enemies here so this guy will aggro and that guy when you come around that corner so you keep going again follow it all the way up <clears throat> Excuse me, just be ready at this point because when you cut these steps here, there is a guy here and one here. So, a good little trick to do is if you do trigger them, if you've got a thrall or thralls with you, send them in front. You just step back, especially if you're using a shield, and they'll deal with them. And then you want to push on forward. Now, there's a door to the right, there is a room through there that you can loop, but you want to take the door in front of you. That will open up. We carry on through. There are occasionally, there's nothing here, but there are occasionally chests, the regular chests that you see throughout the world that you can loot as well. Keep an eye out for them. So you follow this through. Now, this room, there's a chest in this room that we need to get a key from called an ancient key. You can see I've already got one there. Uh, that door where you can go out of that door and it loops you back around, but we won't do that. I'll show you the best way to do this now. Again, the way I run my build, I run a axe and shield, you want to come to here and then send your thralls in because there's a guy there and there's also two here and one there but if you aggro them, if you come here, send your thralls in those guys there, if you're a fighter or fighters, aggro to that guy these from up here will come down, they'll run straight to them if you've got the irritate perk enabled and they'll kill them all there because what you're looking for in here is this chest that looks like it's already open but as you can see it comes up press to interact so if you're on console that's square and it will give you an ancient key as I say you can go through that way which will loop you back around but you can end up getting lost so what you want to do is literally go back from where we came from Follow this all the way back through. <coughs> Excuse me, open this door up. And then you want to go through here. Now, this is where it can get confusing again because you can end up wondering where you have to go. That is a different direction, but there's also a good way out through here. I'll show you quickly actually over here, you can get over the other side, that, we did actually pass that before that ghost I believe is the daughter of Telus, so that is Telus, supposedly, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments by the way uh, the daughter of the Kinscourge, uh, which if you follow the main 
sort of story of Conan, you'll understand what that's all about. But we'll do it when we've been to the boss level. You can jump down here, climb up on the side, go up some steps, and that will take you back to the front door, which is a quick way to leave the dungeon. But what you want to do, if we come back in here a moment, now the temptation is to just literally, because we came this way, run straight at that door, and that's what you want to do. Because there are other bits there, but you want this door in front of you. And then you just want to get all the way up the stairs here. <coughs> Excuse me. As I say, make sure your friend or friends, if you have followers with you, that's what we like to call them now. Or your human friend, if you have another player with you. Uh, they're there with you, but especially make sure your thralls are following you. Uh, you want to get up here. It can be a bit clunky in here, they can be a bit slow. Uh, but there are books to collect if you're collecting these as you work your way up the stairs, keep an eye out for them. And then get up these stairs here. Now what I find is this bit here. There we are, see him there? Wearing well, exactly the same gear as we are and he has this same sword in his hand, that is the kin scourge. Now I've been finding, whether it's a new update or what, but when I get to here on a normal server, he aggroes straight away. But don't worry, he's not quick, he's very very slow. Uh, his three big attacks, I call them, or special attacks that he does, do hit quite hard. So if you've got a follower with you, or two followers with you, get in there, get him to aggro to them. You keep back, let them do all the work, and you'll see his special attacks when he does one. There's like a big AoE sort of attack he does, and you see like this plume of... I suppose red coloured smoke is how you would describe it. As I say, if you want to see me do that, let me know in the comments down below, give me a thumbs up. But yeah, I would get to this point here, before you come around, make sure your friend's up. friend is here, get to here, and as you're running in here, put your little cursor dot on him, send him straight at him. As I say, he walks very, very slow. There is a skeleton up there, and one up that side, now, while your friends are here. Dealing with him, you could come up here, grab that guy and kill him, go up the other side and do the same thing again. But what you need to do is, like I say, this is the Kin Scourge, as you can see, he's wearing what we're wearing. Uh, and on my server, I don't have any of this armor showing, I've actually got it disguised, as you'll see in the video from my followers. They're also in disguised armor, they're actually wearing totally different armour to this, I don't put them in legions and you'll see why in that video, go check it out. Uh, but for a player this is fine and because I do play female I don't like the helmet so I actually disguise it as a pair of earrings but yeah. So he's wearing silent legion armour which basically is the lower version of what we're wearing now and he's also got that in his hand which is, a, it looks a lot bigger than the one we've got, and he looks a lot bigger and taller, but that is essentially what that is, you want to kill him, make sure you bring a pick of some sort with you, I would say preferably hardened steel or above, chop him up, you'll probably get some bits of rubbish that you don't need so you can dump them, you'll get the tiers of two races, which is one of the items that you need to complete the game, you'll need that, so you want to collect that off him, and then also you'll get a heart called the Heart of the Kin Scourge, which does have a decay timer on it. You get plenty of time on it, but the sooner you could kill him and get back to your base, pop it in your preservation box or your improved preservation box if you've got one, if you're not going to use it straight away. Otherwise you've just wasted your time coming up here. So yeah, kill him, and then you want to run up to this tablet. And as you can see there, we've learned all the Silent Legion, the Redeemed Legion. Now, a year or, so, a year or two ago, or it may be longer, when you did this dungeon, you used to have to learn this tablet, and then you also had to try and, well not try, because you could do, you also then had to come up the back here, you had another tablet in this wall, and then there was one here, as there still is, but as you can see it's just teaching us the same thing again. And then, if I just fly over here just to make it a bit quicker. <laughs> there was another one in the wall there, as there still is. 
and there was one there is it so you had to learn all five but now it doesn't matter which one you interact with whether it's that one over there this one here or to make things easier the one right in front of him you can just learn that one as well uh, so you don't need to learn all the tablets now now you will need to make these weapons so to make Telus Sorrow which is a big two-hander or Telus Lament which is a one-hander you will need a heart from this guy uh, so you will have to kill him if you're on a regular server you'll have to leave the dungeon and wait I believe it's 15-20 minutes and if nobody else has come in come back in kill him again to get another heart if you want to because it does take one heart at a time so you would have to farm this dungeon a few times to get a heart from him uh, otherwise you, you can't just get multiples even if, even if you're on a times 5 or a times 10 or a times 2 whatever server you're not going to get multiple hearts it will only give you the one so you've collected all that your friends perfectly fine or your friends however many you've got you've got his heart you've got the tears of the two races <coughs> Excuse me, you want to make your way all the way back down. Now you could literally go back the way we came, but if you're like me, you haven't got the time or you haven't got the patience to be doing all that. So what you can do is, these are lootable chest areas that come here. And as I say, if you look carefully over the side here, now you will have to aim because if you hit that platform you could die. But you want to aim yourself here drop into the water now in dungeons you can't normally climb but if you get stuck in the water there you won't fly up like I just did don't worry but you can jump up onto here uh, your friends might derp about a bit and get stuck in the water your followers but or your follower but don't worry about that if you keep using the return command they should return to you or by the time you get up here you'll probably hear them splashing about in the water underneath there still Go over here, follow it round, and as you can see, we're back at the door. If they haven't returned, I don't know why it does that. Nine times out of ten, when you come out of this door here, you'll find when you leave the dungeon, they'll either be there or here or in front of you. They should be back out. If not, keep running away, keep doing your return command. Probably by the time you come out you'll have this guy to deal with again. Probably these guys down here will have all respawned again. But you just literally go back down the way you came in. Exactly the same way. Keep doing your return command for your followers. And they will eventually ping to you when you get far enough away. So there shouldn't really be any issues. Right, now I've got a little setup down at the bottom. Back near the bridge. We'll jump down there and we'll have a look at the different weapons. And have a look at the stats and numbers that they come with just so you've got an idea what to expect when you get them and um, we'll also have a look at uh, the Redeem Legion that I'm wearing ok, see you in a second ok so here we are down at my little setup that I've got uh, I've just literally put a couple of bits and pieces out of here just to talk to this so we've got a blacksmith bench there, the improved one uh, I'll explain why I've got the fridge in a second and the improved armourer's bench uh, you do need the improved armor's bench and the improved blacksmith's minimum to be able to make these. Uh, the fridge is purely. I've got a couple of the hearts in there. Now you will only get one heart of the King's Scourge each time you kill him. Uh, so if you want to make one of each of these weapons, you're going to have to do that dungeon twice to get them. Uh, but yeah, so the first one, Telus Lament, which is this one here. As you can see, one-handed sword. If you see that board there, Telus Lament. It has a health damage of 54 and an armor penetration of 10. And that is when that is crafted on the improved blacksmith bench without a thrall on it. So no thrall on there. Uh, tier 1, Tier 2, forget those. Even a Tier 3. The one that's on there now is actually named. And it's actually a bladesmith, so it's the one with the little dagger symbol. I believe you could use any blacksmith on there but if you want to get the best damage boost numbers on your weapons you want to use a bladesmith uh, so if you craft this on there without an armor uh, armor blacksmith sorry it will come 
on your bench with 54 damage as we say ten armor pen that you can see there and then the Telus Sorrow which is a big two-hander I let my thralls use this uh, they use this all the time on my server and on the server that I play on as you can see big two-handed sword and this is the same big two-handed sword that you saw me stood with at the beginning of the video and if we look at that second board there Telus Sorrow has a health damage of 60 and an armor pen of 23 so a lot more health damage than it does armor pen which is still pretty decent uh, same as the Tillis Cement, still pretty decent damage numbers surprisingly though these aren't star metal grade weapons they're actually made with hardened steel so what you want to do is uh, decide first which one you're going to look at personally I would highly recommend this one uh, Tillis Sorrow <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first time you complete the dungeon, go make, even if it's for you to use on one of your thralls. So once you complete the dungeon the first time, get back to your base. As I say, ideally pop yourself a thrall on there, blacksmith. Ideally the bladesmith on with a little dagger symbol, doesn't matter which one. Uh, but to craft this you'll need black ice, hardened steel bars, and a weapon handle, and the heart of the kin scourge that you just got from the dungeon, one of those so you pop that in your bench scroll down your list on the right hand side, find your Talis Sorrow and it will craft it and as we say it will come from that guy with your, without that thrall I say at the minimum stats at the 60 and 23 if you craft it with your named tier 4 on there as you see we actually get 25 armor penetration and 74 damage so that buffs it up even more um, and also the Telus Lament if you made one of those it is that the same way again only gives us one point on our armor pen so we go up from 10 to 11 but then as you can see we get a slight increase if I highlight it there on the damage it goes up to 66 so that gives us a 66 on the Telus Lament as opposed to the minimum number that you had at the start so that goes up to 66 from 54 so that gives us 12% so we get 12 points of damage boost on the Telus Lament and only one point armor pen Telus Sorrow goes from 60 to 74, so that's a massive 14. But we get two points of armor pen increase instead of one on the lament. So we go from 23 to 25. However, if you then make yourself a master weapon fitting, if you're at end game and you can make the master weapon fitting, pop that on your Telus Lament, and as you'll see you've got the 23 armor pen and you've now got 71 damage on that so that's gone all the way up from a base damage of 54 to 71 and from a minimum 10 at base armor pen up to 11 with a blacksmith and then another 12 points on top of armor pen up to 23 so that actually then makes it a pretty decent weapon and if you do your L2 if you're on control you can actually kick with this weapon or if you run a shield with it you can do shield block normal light attacks and the heavy lunge attack that is actually a pretty good finishing move uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it on thralls just because it is a one handed sword they can, they can probably be okay with it but this is more for if you're going to use it yourself keep it yourself and you use it but this is the real shocker look at this one Telus Sorrow is now 79 health damage and 37 armor penetration so that has gone from 60 all the way up to 79 so that's a huge almost 20% damage so that's 10 would have made it 17 another nice that's 19 on that and it's gone from a base armor pen of 23 to 37 
So a bit of a jump there in the armor pen. So this is a great weapon for you yourself if you're a build that likes using a two-handed sword. Same with this. You've got the big ah! overhead, yeah. The overhead chop. Then you've got all your combos. Actually, let me just jump out of here a second. This will probably be easier. But yeah. Get your light attacks going, do your combos. Then you've got the heavy. So you go light, 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 heavy. And do a full combo on some of this. Light, 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 light heavy. And then you can even go in with that. Which will chop people down a lot and take them a lot of damage. Right. So that, let's just give me a minute, oops, got a bit too high up there, <laughs> beauty of creative mode, you can fly a lot easier, so that is the weapons, so yeah, if you yourself are going to use it, now you can see the beauty of making it with the named blacksmith, and putting the master weapon fitting on it, you're going to destroy everything, especially if you play on servers that have the player damage increase slightly or if you've got a Delincia take a little star metal one-handed sword off her give her one of these Janos Berserkers whoever you've got give them that and you'll just wreck everything trust me <laughs> it's so much fun so that is the weapons and as I said at the beginning I am wearing the redeemed Legion at the moment which is a slightly better version of the silent Legion uh, because this actually gives you heat and cold resistance so you could pretty much come up here into the snow without the extra soul spiel or soul spell how you pronounce it uh, shield which gives you cold resistance you don't need to use that necessarily you could still bring a bit of spice food with you if you just want it for extra warmth because bear in mind when you drink or your water skin or you eat any ice that is going to cool you down so you do need to warm up again so maybe a little bit of spice food but this armor like the champions armor will also help you in the volcano as well so it's great for the cold and the heat and it does have pretty high armor value if I take a look at mine here you've got the headpiece there which is strength weapon damage strength weapon damage health from the gloves stamina from the legs carry capacity from the feet and you can see on the left there uh, the durability and also the fact that it's a heavy armor you can see on the left there how much armor it's giving me per piece and this again was crafted with a tier 4 armorer and the particular armor we chose is the shield right so it's on with the shield symbol you could use a weight reduction armor with like the little dumbbell weight symbol if you want the armor to weigh a lot less uh, or you could make it with the durability so the hammer symbol armor they would give it more durability and make it even more durable but to be perfectly honest with you make it with the shield right because what you can then do is I would say your chest and your legs are the heaviest parts at first I would put armor reduction kits on your chest and your legs and then master armor plating on your feet your hands and your head and you should be pretty fine as I say, this is the better version. You get the regular Silent Legion, which is that one there. Still perfectly the same, just slightly less armor value. Also comes in medium, which you can see there, and also light. And just for those of you who'll jump on me for just throwing it on male mannequins. Here we go on the female as well. If I go into first person, I can't really tell because of my breath. But as you can see there, the light, the medium, and the heavy. Well, the regular Silent Legion on the female. And obviously this is the Redeem that I'm wearing. So you get three different versions. And if we look at it on these mannequins a second, from the light version, it's all heavy armour again. Uh, so you get... So it's not heavy, this is the light version, start again. Uh, so this is the light silent legion, so for the head you get plus 40 to health, strength weapon damage bonus on the chest, carrying capacity on your hands of th plus 30, so that's pretty decent, agility weapon damage 
on your legs and then stamina on your feet so if you're running a build that you just want light armor for that's got decent armor value still but you want a bit of stamina, bit of health, agility and strength weapon so say for example you might like a sword and shield or an axe and shield build so you're getting your strength weapon bonus there but you might also like to use a bow for pulling people or daggers for applying bleed you're going to get agility weapon bonus which daggers are agility weapons you're going to get the bonus from your legs as well then if we go on to the medium again slightly higher armor value but this time we get stamina on the head agility weapon on the chest strength weapon on the hands health on the legs so it's all slightly different way around and again the plus 30 carry capacity on your feet so if you don't quite want me uh, light but you want something a little bit more armor go for the medium and then the good old silent legion which you saw in my if you've seen it video about the best armor of thralls recently brought out if you haven't seen that video there'll be a link at the end of this one to that one go and check it out and why I talk about in that that although Silent Legion looks good that it's pretty pointless for trolls uh, I won't spoil it in here go check that video out like I say it'll be at the end of this video there'll be a card for you to click on to take you to that video check it out so in this one you get strength weapon damage on the head strength weapon damage on the chest plus 20 health on the hands stamina on the legs and again 15 carry capacity on the feet so you get less carry capacity on the regular silent legion than you do on the light and the medium so those are the three versions that you can get which you also learn when you're in the black keep you learn the weapons and you learn those what you want to do is to come to your armor's bench as i say you want the improved armor's bench at least with your crafter thrall which i've already decided to use but i do highly recommend the shield right and you'll need to make different perfected versions of padding depending on which you're using so for example if you're going to use the um, light silent legion which requires perfected light padding star metal bars and layered silk you're going to need layered silk feline pelt and twine to make your perfected light padding if you want to do the medium you're going to need yeah, so twine, feline pelt and silk to make that one. If you're going to make the medium you're going to need twine again, rhino hide and hardened leather. And the hardened leather you make on your tanner's table with regular leather, thick leather and alchemical base I think it is. Uh, that should be an option on your tennis table, even on the improved tennis table you can do that so you make your hard leather on there and so to then make the light version, if we jump this a second it's going to take the perfected light padding, star metal bars, layered silk if you're making the medium it's the perfected medium padding, star metal bars once again and hardened leather and then if you're going to make the normal so the regular silent legion it's twine once again elephant hide this time because it is a heavy armor and once again you're going to need plenty of hardened leather and as you can see there this one takes perfected heavy padding star metal bars this is where it gets different black ice and alchemical base and that will make you the silent legion which is that one and it will also make with your named person on your bench you'll see at the top of your list here you'll have the redeemed silent legion and as you can see there what it's going to take to make that's exactly what i'm wearing and what you saw me wearing at the beginning of the video so yeah if i've missed anything there guys let me know uh, any questions do ask them in the comments down below if i can answer them i will certainly do my best to do so or if I'm not sure I can put you in the right direction but definitely check all these out as I say three different ones Silent Legion or Redeem Legion great for a player so a player character pretty much pointless for a thrall you can use pieces from this if you wanted to do but 
you'll see, like I say, video at the end of this one. Check that one out. Recommends best armor for thralls and why it's the best. And I'm sure you'll agree once you've watched that video, you'll see why this is pointless and why the setup I'm showing that is actually so much better. Uh, so that shows it on the mail. You can kind of see there heavy, the medium, and the light. And then the female, the light, medium, and the heavy. So that is the Silent Legion armors that you can learn from the Black Keep. And also the weapons, Telis Lament, uh, one hander, and the two handed Telis Sorrow. Which, if you run the setup I show you in the other video, give one of the two followers if you have a two follower build this, or you use this sword and give your thrall a, a mace, or the opposite way around if you prefer a mace, give your thrall this two handed sword. And believe me, it'll be a game changer for you. So, yeah, if you found this useful, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if you guys appreciate this type of content, because the more I see that you do, with the likes that these videos get, let's try and get um, 50. Try and get 50 likes on the video at least, that would be appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next one. Thank you if you have. And as I say, link for the best armor for the rules video at the end. So go check that one out if you haven't seen it already. Thank you very much if you have. And until I see you guys in the next one, I shall say goodbye. So goodbye for now.